All right, bitches and gentlemen, we are here with <laughs> Ben Bader. Thanks for pulling up, bro. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Um, so in this podcast, we're just going to be chopping, chopping the shit. Absolutely nothing too too serious. Um, just getting to know each other and uh, how we can provide as much value as to the the community watching us on Twitter and YouTube. I feel like this will probably go pretty nice on Twitter, yeah. considering YouTube is, is kind of just fucked, censored, little liberal, not to get political, but... You probably saying bitches at the beginning of this just ruined any chance. Yeah, any chances on YouTube, maybe if I censor it, but yeah, no, YouTube probably doesn't stand a chance. Um, but, so you're a copywriter, right? This. So my main skill is copywriting. Basically, the way my agency works... Um, it, like I just work in the info product space, mm -hmm. people that are selling education, coaching, and um, we pretty much do everything for mm -hmm. them. But like writing emails, building funnels, ads, scripting VSL, scripting webinars, like it all revolves around the skill of copywriting. Mm -hmm. But I just have all these other complementary skills that like allows me to help with the whole process. So how did, you, how did you get into that? So first business I ever started, I don't know if we knew each other then. Um, what year was it? It was probably like 2020, 2021. That was your first um, business? Like first real business that like actually made any money. Yeah, life. yeah. Um, Were you in Ohio at the time? Uh, it was right after my first semester, or first year of college. I called it Charleston. Charleston in South Carolina? Yeah, it's fucking okay. sick, bro. Yeah, Great city. That sounds dope. Um, and then I was, I started a marketing agency for basketball trainers. Do you remember that? That's, I do remember that. I do remember that. How yeah. did it go? So it was like the dumbest thing I could have possibly done. <laughs> In retrospect, but it, I learned so much from doing that, that it couldn't have served me more. Hmm. Um, so like, you know, like the local lead gen model, it's like, okay, I'll run, I'll run Facebook ads for a local realtor and help them get leads. Mm -hmm. And then they use go high level to like close all those leads. Mm -hmm. So I use that model just working with basketball trainers, okay. um, which like in theory, it's a super underserved market, like basketball trainers, yeah. nobody's working yeah, with them, like untapped niche. That's why I thought like that. Sorry. And I think going into it now, like what I know now, it could work, mm -hmm. but like me being new, um, and then also like never investing in marketing before, mm -hmm. it was just tough. But like I and was, they probably don't have a lot of money to exactly dump like into it. the majority of them are making like five to ten k a month. Like some of the better ones are like twenty to forty, but that was like yeah. max. Interesting. Um, so I was doing that for like a year maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and like it went well, like I, that's how I made my first hundred grand. Like I, like at my peak with that, I was making like 15 to 20 K a month. Okay. That's not bad um, for that, you know, yeah. basketball training. That's... And so I built a bit of a brand like in the basketball training space. So then I started working with a few guys that had big personal brands and they were selling info products and I reached out to them and they were like, oh yeah, like we need somebody for mm -hmm. this, this and this. I didn't really know how to do any of it at the time. Like I, I could run Facebook ads, mm -hmm. but lead gen Facebook ads and info product ads are completely different. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd never, I'd only built that type of funnel too for like my own business. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, sure, like I can fucking do it. Pay me two grand a month. 20, I think it was 2,500 bucks a month. Um, and crazy. so I started working with this one guy and then I was working with like, at one point I was working with five of the top like 10 biggest personal brands in basketball. Damn. Um, I still wasn't making a ton of yeah, money. I think I was yeah. making probably 15, 20 grand a month still. So, because I feel like getting into copywriting is incredibly difficult, no? So I never went like the, I'm a freelance copywriter route. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I can write your emails, I can run your ads, I can build your funnels. Mm -hmm. So like all of those skills, again, revolve around copy, mm -hmm. but it was never like, hey, I'm a freelance copywriter. Because yeah. that's a harder pitch. It's like, for that to actually work, they need to have a good sales process. Like if they're selling a high ticket offer, yeah. they need to have a good enough sales process to where your emails are actually going to do anything for mm -hmm. them. Because um, I feel like a majority of kids who try to do copywriting just like fail miserably. Yeah, because a lot of them will go after e-com, which is like, first of all, it's just saturated. Not saturated in a sense where like if you're good, you can get mm -hmm. clients. But um, if you're a beginner, it's like hard. That's why I'm, I'm glad I started in basketball is because it's like, there was no other competition, so it was yeah. basically like a fucking internship for me to just so, fail. Would you recommend people who are starting to go to like untapped areas and kind of dip their toes in the water? It can work. Um, like, there's so many different. You know this. Like, there's so many different things so, that people can do. So many, bro. Um, so many. So that's why it's like, it, I, I'm curious as to why you picked copywriting out of like the whole. Well, it's not, well, just, my understanding is you don't just do copywriting, right? You do right. the whole. So, yeah, it was spectrum. Facebook lead gen. Um, oh. But like for me to be able to set up 
a Facebook ad. Like I'm writing the copy for the ad. If it's a script, I'm writing that script in their video of the actual ad. Okay. Um, and then when a lead would come in, like they're getting texts, like even th that small stuff is okay. copy. Yeah. And then um, when I got into the info product world, like I was doing all of their emails, obviously that's copy, mm -hmm. um, building their funnels. So what do you think was the thing that took you from the 15K month to what, like 60, 80K now? Yeah, um, so we'll do probably 80 this month. Um, biggest thing was, first of all, I've just gotten way better as a marketer. Um, like I just got more skilled mm -hmm. and I've seen different businesses and I'm like able to come into a business and say like, okay, you get this much leverage, but you're like missing out on this because you're neglecting this area of your business. Um, so not only just skills, but also like putting myself in a position where I can mm -hmm. work with the top of the market. Yeah. Like most gotcha. of the guys that I'm working with have hundred thousand followers. And um, do they, how do you get those leads? Mainly through kind of Twitter and referrals, you know? bro. Yes. Like, yeah. I don't do any cold yeah. outreach. I hate cold. I've always that hated is. cold outreach. That's how I started. Like, that's sucks. how I got my first probably 50 clients. Yeah. Um, but it sucks. So now it's just kind of like you've worked with so many people. You have a good reputation to kind of where it just, like, yeah. sells itself. Yeah. And do you it, feel like that's part of, like, why you're doing so well now? It's like you're not in that place of, like, des desperity where, like, you need money. Yeah. Like, it all came to, like, a perfect storm where, like, I had the Twitter personal brand to prove them a real person. Yeah, yeah. And then I had the skills and then the results with other clients. So do you think most out. copywriters should try to build a personal brand? If, so in the beginning, like with any business you're yeah. trying to start, you're going to have to get your first if few you clients have, through cold outreach. And if you have followers, it'll never hurt, hurt you. But at the same time, like it took me two years of posting on Twitter to like have enough of an audience mm -hmm. and enough credibility to like be where I'm at. So yeah. like as you're doing the grunt work, which would be the, the cold outreach, mm -hmm. continue to build up the personal brand alongside it. And then eventually you have the personal brand exactly. that feeds you and you don't have to fucking Yeah. Deal. And now people are like, like actualizing the power of a personal brand. And now everyone's trying to do it when you should have been doing it three years ago when it was cringy. Yeah. You Facts. know what I mean? Facts. Like, bro, when I started TikTok, I got flamed. I'm sure. Flamed, bro. Like mutilated by the kids in my hometown. Like, yeah. you're just going to make TikToks for the rest of your life? I'm like... Hey, bro, like it, it'll probably help me eventually yeah. down the line. Dude, like, if I never did that, I would, wouldn't be here. Yeah. Right? And at the time, it was just TikTok. I'm curious about that. What made you start? Uh, Gary V. I hate to say it. But no, Gary, dude, I, I, I love Gary. It, bro, I, I fucking love it. Gary. Because, dude, I was, I was fucking 19 years old. I dropped out of college, and my mom was a huge Gary V fan. And she would send me his videos, and he would just think, you know what? Just post eight times a day. And I was like, you know what? Like, why not? Fuck it. So I was just like a college dropout in working a 40 hour a week job at a hospital you know I was like why not just post my thoughts like yeah. that's all I'm gonna do I'm not gonna put any pressure on and also the first TikTok I ever posted got like a million views the very first one so I was like holy shit and I was like yeah that's just like I just won like what was it about dude it was so so funny I wish I, I would show you if I didn't have the my phone hooked up to the audio dude it was so corny I had my phone propped up in my bedroom and I have some sad song on and I walk into my room, I throw my backpack on the, on my bed, and I turn on the TV, it's Modern Warfare 2, and I was just like some nostalgic movie, and it was like how zero friends were online, a million views. And like, no I literally way. went to like my local bar, like the week after that, and people were like, yo, I saw you on TikTok, no from my way, first bro. TikTok. So after that, I was like, this, this, I might, should do this, this might be something here, so. Dude, isn't it funny how like you look back on old videos and they're just so cringy to you, but like oh, they serve the purpose. Oh, like, bro, dude, I oh, can't even watch videos yeah. that I post at like beginning of the year sometimes. I'm like, bro, yeah, what the but fuck I feel like that's you how you have to evolve. It's just totally. kind of by thinking you're a pussy. You know, if you watch my old videos, which I don't encourage anyone <laughs> to do, like it's. Uh, but at the same time, I do encourage people to watch them because, like, dude, I was just getting shit out there. Like, yeah. And you see the growth. Yeah, and I think at the same time, what my main focus was was just trying to make people feel something, and I think that was like the the biggest reason why they've stuck with me for so long. Because like, dude, in actuality, I have not grown followers on TikTok in the past like eight months. Yeah, I've actually lost followers because I've started posting so much controversial shit. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because the people that were there from the beginning will literally stick by anything I say, like like almost like a cult following. Because, like, I was there with them through their breakups, through them graduating high school. Because it's been so long, and I never had the intention of selling anything. So when I did sell Create Your Reality, everyone was like, oh, my God, like, yeah, I need I need to hop on this. And I now feel like everyone's hopping on the personal brand wave with the immediate intention, like, I need to make money, I need to make money, I need... In that it place. It doesn't... Yeah, yeah bro, yeah. it doesn't work. Like, I, I monetize my audience in the sense of, like, it brings me... 
uh, deals and business to work with, but I'm not selling anything directly to my audience. Yeah. And like, that's the intention that you need to go out of it. Like that's, and that's when you're going to enjoy it. If you just talk about one thing, whether it's like sales or cold email Mm -hmm. or whatever else, you're just, bro, you're going to make 10 videos and be like, what the fuck else can I talk about? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, dude, that's why like a personal brand is so crucial because like, then you just document what you're doing with your life. And a lot of people get that confused because they, 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 they kind of force themselves to be creative rather than just documenting what they're going through. Yeah. And I think that was the big thing that set me apart was like, I didn't, I didn't try to create, I would just literally document everything I learned and everything I was doing and anything that I was going through. Like, because that's how you establish connections with people is like, they right. want to know who you are behind the screen, right? Like they right. want to like feel like you're literally just like on FaceTime with them, talking to them and just like yeah. over time building that rapport. It's just, it's, it's a cheat code to Yeah. So that's an interesting point. Cause like, I feel like my videos on TikTok, like I'm authentic in a, in a sense where like my advice and what I'm saying is like pretty raw. It's great. But yeah. I don't go into like story as think as much as you have. You should. You should really go into the stories, bro, because that's what hits people. Yeah. Because then they're like, oh shit, he was actually just a normal kid like I was. Yeah. And now he's doing this. Why can't I do that? Right? So this would make, when I when I tell stories about how I had like that shitty car and like how I have changed in such a short amount of time that it's for people because I was just a normal kid and it gives them a kind of like a glimmer of hope, you know? So yep. like if you can hit those pain points, not even pain points, but that relatability and showing totally. them. That's why Mason's fucking blown up. Yeah. Like I haven't seen any of his TikTok. Really? Yeah. But I've heard they're blowing up. But Dude, like, he's a savage. Yeah. Um, he just talks like he's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Like if you watched his video and you had no context about him, you'd be like, what, who the fuck is this little kid and why is he talking about, like, making money? <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> but that's why it works. Um, when people come to you and they're like, yo, what can I do to grow on TikTok? What what do you tell them normally? Do, connection, 100%. Like, that's the only thing I would focus on, right? Unless you're, like, in, like, the prank niche or fucking comedy niche or whatever, entertainment niche. Yeah. Like, then you just have to be stupid, essentially. But in terms of, like, building a personal personal brand where it's like you want people to really fuck with you it's those personal stories getting vulnerable and really really letting them know who you are and not like having a different personality on camera than off camera just total transparency and it it takes a lot of time a lot of people now just expect it to happen overnight bro it's like dude i've been doing it for since 2019 so that's about to be four years and then you look at it's crazy to think about yeah but dude if i was doing YouTube that whole time or posting on Instagram that whole time like my life would be in, insanely different but like that's like obviously retrospect you know you can't you can't predict the future but like if you look at what Iman's done he's been doing it for eight years yeah. seven years so it's like you can't Jordan Welch been doing it for six seven years all these people have been doing it for so long and like you, you just can't compare yourself to these people and expect it to happen really quickly I mean it does happen for a few people but rare rarely um I actually was talking to Alex Hyden about it and he was like, everyone's trying to do it really quick and it's just like, you just got to do it brick by brick. And I'm like, no one thinks like that anymore, right? Because everyone's instant gratification. So it's posting every day with zero expectation, right? Like the videos that go viral are the ones you did not think were going to go viral. Yeah. Right? Like always. you just pull up the camera and you're like, you whiff. And then 300,000 views, 300,000 likes. And you're just like, what the fuck? The harder you try, the less well it does it's weird how it's that works really bro. anytime weird. i'm like yo this video is a fucking banger it's gonna run nothing flops i posted a video on my backup tiktok uh like two days ago i saw that one went fucking nuts I for know. zero reason but okay zero so i think reason. when you think about it like it was very tangible like mm-hmm. it was good hook and then the advice that you gave was actually like tangible like okay mm-hmm. like i could actually just go on tiktok like, and literal. get movie clips and like actually do this nobody's gonna actually fucking do it yeah yeah but maybe two people yeah uh, 70,000 saves like they're actually gonna yeah. go back and watch the video like come on <laughs> yeah bro I can't tell you how many like tweets I have bookmarked that I just know I'll never go back yeah, to them. <laughs> yeah like, I, bro I don't even know the last time I went through my bookmarks but yeah it's it's ultimately comes down to how like it, it's kind of similar with just friendships in, in general you know it's like the, the quality of your friendship is based upon how open you are with that person, right? Like how much of how personal can you be with that person yeah. or how many experiences can you share with the person who will really determine like your guys' relationship. Yeah. So it's the same with the random person on the internet if you want. Right. It's like you break down this filter that everybody has, like when they're mm-hmm. talking to somebody newer mm-hmm. and if you can just like break out of that yeah. and talk to somebody yeah. as if you've known them for years, 
that's when the when the real exactly. connection exactly happens. so 80k a month bro 80k a month doing copywriting that's like very very rare so very rare yeah so i mean like if you ask me like what do i do like i'm a marketer i run a marketing agency mm -hmm. um and so like that number is made up of maybe eight clients right now oh wow um, only eight clients 80k a month yeah so so what's the lesson in there to work with only rich people yeah yeah definitely. i saw that video i saw that video <laughs> yeah um I mean, and like when you can come into, if you go to somebody that has a big personal brand mm -hmm. and they just don't know how to build the, the structure, the info product side mm -hmm. of it, like they already have this much leverage and then they, if they did it on their own, they could make probably 50% to 70% of the money that you were going to make them. Mm -hmm. But by me coming in here and being able to make them 50% more, like that's where I eat and then I get 10% mm -hmm. of that. So it's like one client can be worth yeah, so 10, 20, 30. How do, you, how do you structure it? So it's like a retainer and then a percentage? Yeah. So it's a bit messy because like people will come to me in all different situations. Like mm -hmm. some people will already be running ads. They already are doing X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. So like depending on what I'm a part of and what I'm directly, what revenue I'm directly correlated mm -hmm. to, that's where the percentage comes in. Gotcha. Um, and like long term, gotcha. so the way... The way that this like really scales to like multi six figures a month, I think is by just continuing to find like unique opportunities to partner with businesses that have a lot of leverage on the personal brand side mm -hmm. and have a big audience. But like, again, they just don't know how to, how to monetize any of it. They don't know how That's to. That's the thing, bro. So many creators have like millions of followers in zero business. Yeah. Zero business like knowledge whatsoever. Yeah. Dude, I was, I was DMing this guy the other day. I don't want to say his name, but. Um, he has like five or six hundred K on TikTok, and we were talking about hopping on a call and he was like, oh yeah, I work from, I work until five every day. So we can do after that. I was like, bro, that is you have 600, you have a fucking nine to five. What are you doing? Bro, like, bro. There was this one chick, bro, like multiple girls, but I can think of like two or three off the top of my head that have these cult, like spiritual niche following. Yeah. And they... And I'll DM them. I'm like, please let me help you make money. I do not want any of it. Like, nice. let me just help you make money. And they're like, nah, I don't really care. I'm like, I respect that you don't care, but like, <laughs> holy shit, you, you, a have, bag there. you have a million followers and you've never sold one thing. And Other they like love fucking you. Fucking shitty little skincare products. Or like, that... dude, this one chick sells hypnosis videos for five bucks. Oh my god. I'm like. This is painful. Sweetheart. Like this like, is so on. painful for me to to sit here, and do it. and like, and then they post TikToks of them like, hate, they're at work and they hate their job. I'm like, what are you doing? It, it's <laughs> mine, but it just goes to show you like how slim of a percentage of the population actually has any like business understanding whatsoever. You know, it's like yeah. I started TikTok basically understanding like if I started this and I was, it, I kind of looked at it like Clash of Clans. It's really weird. But, like, I loved Clash of Clans in high school because, like, it was one of those things that you would, over time, it would build and you'd get better. And you'd, yeah. it would get better over time. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to play Clash of Clans anymore. I want something in real life that if I put my time into, like, all these kids are putting their time into Clash of Clans, like, I'll get real world substance from yeah. it. And that's where I looked like TikTok and Instagram as. It's like, well, if I just every day show up, it'll one day give me fruits to that labor. Yeah. It, but it's... I can't rush that process. I think about that a lot. Like, obsession never dies. Like, if you were obsessed with anything mm -hmm. at a young age, whether it was sports or mm -hmm. video games or whatever the fuck else, like, that has to go somewhere. And that's either going to go somewhere negative. Like, mm -hmm. if you just try to let it die, like, it's still going to be inside of you and it's either going to eat you alive mm -hmm. because you're just working a normal job and you're, like, mm -hmm. hating your life. Or you're gonna get addicted to drugs. Yeah. Or yeah. alcohol and other shit. And then uh, Or you obviously then you follow something else and then like you kinda have to be here. obsessed too, right? Yeah. Like you like there I don't know about you, you probably do feel this, but like if I go like a week without working on my business, like I start getting like it drives me crazy. Like itches, bro. Like literal yeah. itches. And like for me that used to be like uh like video games in high school. It's like I would just get bored and stimulate myself. Now I can't do that. Like I wish I could, right? Like yeah. video games with the boys would always hit like it never would miss but now it's like once you start building that 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 reward system where it's like you can actually go on your phone with the intention of trying to make money and then just go through your dms and make money within a phone call it's like yeah. you'll you'll your your life will be entirely changed once you can actually 
open the portal to internet money because then you're like, holy shit, like people use their phones for the most retarded shit ever. Yeah. Like think about how many ways you can make money off your phone, right? Like countless, you can, you can trade sales, what we do, countless ways to use your phone to make money. And then there's just people out there that play like fucking doodle jump. And those are the people in the TikTok comments that are like, oh, this is bro. a scam. <laughs> the TikTok comments are on another level of bro. awful, bro. I did not realize how many people think capitalism is like this evil thing. Like, even, even if no. it is, like, let's say capitalism is evil. So doesn't it serve you to, like, at least play the game and try to win it rather than just hate the system? Dude, I don't like, know what they're... What they're what, I, I think TikTok... Dude, it... TikTok's actually really fucked when you think about it because, like, you got to think about how young and impressionable these minds are, right? And they have no idea, like, capitalism, fucking, uh, what's the, communism, socialism, they don't, they don't fucking, they don't know yeah. what that shit is. And they just see some, like, old, like, fat person talking about it and they're like, wow, this is, this is. Right. This is right. Or and they like, look at that person and they're like, that's, that's who I agree with. Like, yeah, that's who I want to be. I mean, it's, everything's kind of just a reflection of yourself, right? So if you see a little bit of yourself in someone, you're going to probably agree with it. So it's like, yeah. and, and then all of those accounts, I'm sure you've noticed, are always anonymous. Yeah. Every single time. It's they like, have zero user 167432. Yeah, every single, and I'm like, bro, like you, and it, a lot of the times it's the same people commenting on my videos like first yeah. before I, i'm like dude you're like my biggest fan at this point like <laughs> yeah how are you here like you put that much time into like, like doing bro, something productive it's my and tiktok's just the worst out of every platform yeah and i i don't think people understand until you start posting on it especially when you start talking about money or anything of substance people people will just come in there with absolute debauchery and you're yeah. just like and like you'll say something that you don't even think is like absurd like or as like controversial yeah, at yeah. all and then people will find ways to disagree with it it's dude, that's wild. that is tiktok though bro it's yeah. like you could say something that dude do you remember last summer when i was about to get canceled for the fat yes. the fat person video bro, yes. that was unreal i'm bro. sure i was getting like multiple death threats a day like jesus christ in my in it it just made me think i'm like all of these people are genuinely hypnotized into believing that the, like it is totally normal to be obese. Yeah. And like when it, it was totally <laughs> mind boggling to me. And that's really what like set me down like the the matrix path is like That's how you like ended up in basically like, bro, conspiracy cause, stuff. Because I'm isn't like really a conspiracy. That led me down a path of just like self introspection to being like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like how did we get to this point where normalizing obesity in an unhealthy lifestyle is like fuck you if you think it's not okay yeah so that's that's literally which is what like and like to the point where i was so close to being canceled that like i kind of stopped giving a fuck because like that was like the bullet they shot at me and like and he stands there <laughs> yeah i mean i was pretty phased by it though i'm not gonna lie i was like yo like i spent three years dude and i have like a couple family members who are a little like overweight and they saw it and they thought i was like coming at them i'm like Bro, like, <laughs> I was just oh, saying like man. we shouldn't pub like romanticize. All right, I'll double down if this yeah. gets me canceled, whatever. Yeah. But I'm probably like one of them. I'm I'm genuinely scared of fat people. Like, bro, <laughs> like they scare me, bro. It's, it's a cult. It's a literal cult. Every now and then, don't be like a really nice fat person. Yeah, it's like I mean, on. the thing is, is like a majority of them are nice. Yeah, right. But it's like you just don't know what goes on behind the curtain. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like if you, peel back or you peel open like their rolls in their because, stomach like, and then you can how do you get to that point and a lot of people like i don't want i don't want to dive too deep into it you know because then we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get canceled we're gonna get canceled and shit but it's like you have to be so undisciplined or just completely unaware right it's, it's yeah one or the other right and yeah that's what i don't get dude like people just want to the way to win the game isn't by opting out of it in mm -hmm. a sense of like oh all that stuff is evil like capitalism is evil like mm -hmm. working on yourself is evil like if you want to do that, it's fine, but you're going to be unhappy and you're just going to like, Brody, I'm just not going to try. Right. It's like just really working with the cards that you were dealt and like trying to make the most out of it. And if you, if you have like that 
like, oh, why me mentality, you're just totally fucked from the get. Before you even give yourself a chance, yeah. you are literally fucked. Yeah. In, I mean, <sighs> it's interesting how, like, in the beginning, whenever you're starting, like, everybody that I've talked to that started as an entrepreneur at some point, like, in the beginning, it was just reprogramming your mind to feed you thoughts that actually benefit you. Yeah, it was a very good like, way of putting that. Like, I remember when you first started posting TikToks. I don't know if you remember this. I sent you a DM. I'm going to find this. It was probably, like... On Instagram? Yeah, it was probably 2020. I remember seeing your TikTok, and you were small at the time. Bro, I owned the For You page in COVID. You did. In COVID, I don't... You fucking did, bro. It was... I think it was because I pioneered the self-help on TikTok. You totally did. In that time. And I remember watching that and being like, that, like, resonated. Just, like, the way that you thought Mm -hmm. it was resonated with me with where I was at then. And obviously, we were in completely different places from where we are now. That's crazy. But it it just starts. April 26th, 2020. 2020. I sent you a TikTok. What's good, bro? I've been loving everything you're doing on TikTok. Just wanted to say what's up from Cincinnati. You sent me the TikTok? I, I just what, sent you what, this this DM. <laughs> and I just said, where'd you go in Mexico? <laughs> that was like that was like a year later. <laughs> oh my god. But dude, it's that's, hilarious how that works out, bro. Bro, I think in between like the beginning of 2020 to 2021, like 2020, like just that whole year, I think I gained like I think 60 million likes on TikTok and when you think about that like I'm almost I'm at 100 million likes basically so when you think about 100 million likes like how many impressions is 100 million likes because if you're getting probably a bill like over a billion over a billion impression which is just fucked because it's slowing down drastically and I didn't have a business at that time yeah so I'm just sitting here I'm like Bro, yeah. if I had one link in, if I had one bro. link in my you're, fucking you're bio, emails, bro, bro. bro. Um, <laughs> I know, and it'll probably never be like that again, unfortunately, unless like some crazy Andrew Tate shit happens where I just totally take over the internet. Because like, dude, a billion, a billion impressions. That's it, crazy. It's it, it, totally free. Yeah. Zero dollars. Yeah. You can't even conceptualize From my four hundred dollar a month apartment in Ohio. That's hilarious. I know, bro. It drives me nuts, but like. The fact that a lot of those people are still there with me it makes it all like not a lot because if you I mean like a sliver of a percentage but even yeah. a sliver of a percentage is a fucking lot after a billion impressions and I feel like one of your videos is, is destined to I feel like you need to utilize sad songs more yeah <laughs> as corny as it is really bro, I have countless people coming to me and it's just like bro like when you're saying those things and like you and you, the music in the music it's no just way. like dude it it it's like almost hypnotizing when you think about it. Interesting. Because like the song itself elevates an emotion. Yeah. And then when you throw words on top of it, it's like... More dopamine. Yeah, more dopamine, whatever the chemicals that's getting released. Little fucking dopamine lizards. Exactly, bro. It, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I am too. Like we're both guilty of it yeah, for sure. Yeah, dude. I, I try not to open TikTok at all. Because like once you open it up, it's a it's poor text. It's a poor dude. Portal. I got caught yesterday in a loop where I, it was like <laughs> probably so it was probably an hour. Like, I got caught on this so one page, bro. like the entertainment pages where they're doing like crazy outrageous pranks in public. Not even pranks; they're just being fucking weird, dude. Those are hilarious, dude. There's just so many like what are they called? I forget what it's called, but it's like you just click one video and then you find someone's page and then you find their page and then you find someone else's page from there yeah. and you just. You're just down this fucking board. To, and this down the rabbit hole. Short yeah. form content is probably the number one culprit for all mental disorders, bro. Yeah. Because you open that shit up and you're just, yeah. Your brain turns off immediately. I think unplugged. the pendulum will will swing back soon. Like everybody's just talking in these short little clips, not really giving much value. Mm-hmm. Like it's gonna swing back eventually to, to what? where. Like longer form, mm-hmm. like more raw, authentic content is gonna is gonna make a return. I agree, I agree, and it's because how how much mindless shit can people really consume? Right, you know what I mean. Like eventually, someone has to come around and actualize that. Like, yeah, I've I've been a bot, you know. Like yeah. that has to happen. That's why like threads, I feel like is a huge opportunity for so many people. Because, like, if you look at threads, you, you download it. Yeah. Like, it's all just retarded content. Yeah. It's all retarded. So, if you can just stand out. Just low IQ Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. If you can just. It's so, <laughs> so low IQ Twitter. Like, I'm thinking, like, like room temperature IQ Twitter. <laughs> but if you, like, stand out on people, from people on threads, like, you're, there's so few people, right? Like. Totally. And if you have an Instagram following at all. Like, I've gained 5,500 followers on threads and I've yep. really threaded 
Yeah, I hope they improve the the UI because like I just yeah. don't like the way it looks right now. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah. also like is yours white or black? It's black. Yeah, mine's black too. Um, if like my my thoughts, like my tweets, or my written thought is correlated with Twitter, and what works on Twitter isn't going to work on yeah. Threads as well because yeah. the the awareness level is different. Yes, it's 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 like TikTok but for words only. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, did, I think Threads is a lot more like superficial, like. Not superficial, but surface level. Like, you could post a, a thread on there and be like, three years ago I was broke, living in my like mom's house, and now I'm living in Boca, or living in Miami. Yeah, or just like, like simple shit like, like, about God. You know, like, don't forget to thank God today, like, they just yeah. make that shit up. You know, it's just like super, super surface level. And like, dude, it's so interesting when you go deep in a TikTok. If you've gone like deep in a TikTok, like, it's always interesting to see the response of it. Because it, it, I saw one of your videos today, you were like, the brain dead monkeys, they won't, you know, their brains will explode. <laughs> yeah, I was like, funny. oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was not for That's TikTok a, at all. How are you enjoying Miami? I love it, bro. Uh, yeah. So, I, was, I wanted to talk about this, because obviously you live in Miami, now you're in Boca. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it because, like, obviously all my friends are there, mm-hmm. it's super walkable, like, it yeah. also makes us way more efficient. I work with Mason, I work with my boy Sanjay. Luke and I work together. Mm-hmm. So, like, we're all in the same building. And oh, all like, the same building? Yeah. Like, when you need to get cool. something done, That's it's so not like, like yo, let's hop on a phone call. It's like I walk up to their room or they walk down to my room or their you know, fucking That's, entire floor. The That's way. OP as fuck. And yeah. So, that part's sick. It's cool. Like, the people that you can meet, obviously, you always have something to do. Um, people are like, yo, like, you're going to get distracted. Like, I remember when I was moving there, like, oh, just don't get distracted. Like, that's not hard. I don't know about you, but that, no, that's it's like not that hard for me. It's just like, when I want to go out, I'll fucking go out. Yeah, but like, yeah. majority of the time, I got a lot of that out of my system in college of like wanting to go out and fucking Yeah, party. so you had that actual like authentic college experience. I did. I didn't have that at all. So when I was in yeah. Miami, bro, I don't know if you saw the videos, but like... I, I remember like, when you first got there, it was some crazy shit. Fucked, bro. <laughs> and like, I would go to you Miami frat parties. I don't know how I'd finesse my way in there, bro. That, that must have been left. That was so, like SIG app, you Miami yeah. parties, bro. I'm, I'm in there, I'm like, this is their life. You know, yeah. like, they have nothing to do. You, you go to that and you go back to your normal life. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, this. Is, their life is literally revolved around this. Yeah. And they have no expenses. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Bro, and right? That's why I had to get out of Charleston. Because, like, I was lucky enough to, like, have my parents pay for college. I was in a fraternity. I was fucking loving it. Like, Charleston as a school is 70% female. Like, it's awesome, bro. Bro. But it's, like, too good. And I realized that I was Cause once in the Matrix. That, bro. <laughs> like, because, like, it, it was too good to just distract you to do that for the next four years and spend a fuck ton of Dude, money. And then what happens to people after they graduate, right? They go from literal party paradise. And you go from, like, super high status. Like, if you're in a fraternity, you have status. Which is right, isn't that weird? And then you like, then you go to like, let's say you're making sixty grand a year, and you're like a bigger city. Now you're at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, and you don't have any like there's community like, like that. Boom. It's weird, bro. It, it's it's got to be. It's weird. so weird, bro. Because some of these girls, like, I would like hit on when I was at these parties, and they would just be like obsessed with these frat guys, and I like yeah. I couldn't wrap yeah, my head fired, around bro. it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what is going on here? Like these dudes are like. Poor. Like, they're poor. Like, their yeah. parents obviously loaded. They're poor. Yeah. Complete Chad and Brad. What is going yeah, on? Yeah, it's like the currency is your status in right. the frat. Like, right? It makes... No... And then they're thrown into the... Like, post-college depression has to be so brutal. It's gotta be. So brutal. And that's what I had to avoid. Like, yeah, and exactly. so I didn't fully drop out until halfway through my sophomore year. By credits, I'm still mm-hmm. a freshman. Because um, I had a 1.1 GPA my first semester. You but, made it a whole semester, though. So I made it to basically. How, how, how were you allowed in the frat with one point one? So we were off campus. They got uh, gotten kicked off campus. Was frat. Um, it was Pi Cap when they were on campus, and then we were OCP once they got kicked off. OCP. What's uh, that stand It was off campus philanthropy because mm. we were yeah philanthropy. very philanthropy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude. So like, I made it through my first year. First semester, 1.1 GPA. Second semester, I was on academic probation. Got cu- cut short by COVID. And, so you um, made it? You passed for the 1.1? So I was on academic probation, so like I had to get like a 3.0 and like stay in school wow. for the next semester. And I yeah. did that. And then COVID hit, so that was like six months in basically isolation, like trying to do shit online. I wasn't making much money yet, but I was doing stuff. 
and I was like, I want to drop out. Like, I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And my mom was like, just go back, like, take one class to so stay enrolled, and if you want to drop out after next semester, you can. So I did that, and, like, after that semester, I was, I was probably making, like, five to ten grand a month. So and you, I was like, All right, you got three semesters under your belt? Three, I was, I was there for two years. I was wow. in school for three semesters. Oh, what grade, are you a grade below me or above me? What I graduated high school in 19. Okay, the same grade. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So you would, you would have just graduated college too. Yep. Then. Yeah, same. That's crazy. I know, right? It's so weird to think about, bro. <laughs> I know, because everyone's like posting their graduation pictures and I'm like, bro, like, I, I've been graduating, yeah, bro. Like, bro holy my fuck. life is a graduation party, yeah, motherfucker. Holy. Like, I, did you ever make it up to Toledo? Hmm. Not shit going on. That's where nah. I went to college. Yeah, yeah. I lasted probably, I want to say like a month. Okay. Like a solid month before I dropped out, just because like once the test started coming, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> it's like, like miss me with that. Like, I was like, this I was is, here for the party. This <laughs> is, and there was no parties at Toledo. That's, that's okay. the thing. So like I'm sitting there, I'm like, this is not what I thought college would be. Yeah. I thought like it would be like Project X or like yeah, some crazy, just something more than yeah. this because Toledo <laughs> is nothing, bro. Like that's the difference. That's why I was able to. Stay in that hellhole for two years, yeah. even because it was see, fucking amazing. See, if I had like hot chicks yeah. all around me, I, I would have made something happen. But <laughs> I'm glad I didn't, because I dropped out like immediately. I started making yeah. money signing petitions. That was the first time I ever made money. Was these were, these random dudes were selling or signing petitions on campus? So I just went up because I had nothing better to do. I didn't want to do homework or anything. So I was like, I'll help yeah. you guys. Like prefer you. Like I'll just help you guys. And he goes, We'll give you two dollars for every signature you get. I was like, You're shitting me. Like two dollars for, for a signature, so I just went into the fucking library and just wrote down That's... a thousand signatures. Oh, shit. Yeah, and they were like, "Bro, holy fuck!" You're, yeah, you're so, savage. So, then, <laughs> so, so then I go down to Ohio State. I had to skip an exam because I went down to OSU to work for them, and they were giving me six dollars a signature. So I was, dude, I was, I that was my <laughs> first time. So that made like me, a literal infinite money glitch. Yeah, yeah, that made me like. And then I went to a tailgate at Toledo, and I brought my fucking clip no clipboard. Was getting signatures and shit. That's hilarious. so I made like six grand off of that, and like that was my time where I realized I was like, "Why am I here?" Yeah, and you're like, "What the fuck? What what is college? Oh, wait, you can make money doing something else." Yeah, so I, I take that six grand, I drop out, work at the hospital, and that was that was that, bro. Yeah, that was that. Do you guys uh, plan on moving out of Miami, or are you posted there for a minute? Oh, at least be there for like another year and a half. Um, and then what you think north north or like I don't know like I could stay there another three years or so mm -hmm. um, I I do think like at some point I want to just kind of fuck off and go to Europe for like three to yeah. six months even like a That'd year and just kind of do That'd that dope. Miami's um, a great hub so I'm curious like how do you feel versus like now living in Boca versus Miami like how have each of them kind of served you or like yeah 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 Miami Dude, the first year I was in Miami was just fucking retarded. You know, like, that's yeah. the only word for it. Like, because my first year there, like, the first six months I was there, I didn't know anybody other than, like, Abe. And then I met a few kids at U Miami from the bars. So, like, the first six months there, I was literally just working. Like, yeah. total solitude, basically. So, that helped me make, make a good amount of money, save a good amount of money. So, then when, like, September came around, which was my birthday, it was... My friend Matt had the penthouse at Paramount, so he had the 49th floor penthouse, a three bedroom, which is fucking retarded. He's 19, 18 years old, damn. paying 14 grand a month in rent. I was Holy like, shit, I was like, you're bro. insane. There's levels, bro. Yeah, levels, Fuck. levels. That's crypto money, bro. That's crypto yeah. money. So I, uh, that from like August 2021 to like April 2022 is just like fucked. Yeah. Right? Like, Clubs every weekend, tables every weekend, Miami frat parties every weekend. Like, it was just insane. So I think the only, the, there's like two main benefits I got from Miami and it was parties, got that out of my system. Yeah. Um, and just meeting people, like yeah. meeting so many people. But now it's to the point where like, I don't need to be there to like have these connections with people. Cause like if, if, if there's something going on, I'll drive down there. It's an yeah. hour away. Um, and I don't have to deal with all that, like the fucking noise. I can't handle the noise. The noise is annoying. The noise like, is I'll so... totally agree with you there. I, and like, I think, like almost subconsciously, your stress levels are higher when you're in that environment. So much like beep, 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 beep. the only thing I'll say about that though is I think sometimes like the stress is is helpful mm. to like when I'm up in Jupiter, mm -hmm. like it's so peaceful to the mm -hmm. point where like. 
I just want to chill, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, it's yeah. easy to work, but it's also bro. like in Miami, I'm like, I have to do shit. Like I walk outside, I see supercars, like I'm around all these people yeah. that are making a ton of money. So like that, I think it's a bit of a immature way to get motivation, but it does motivate you. Because I feel like Miami, Miami is like everyone wants to look rich, but then when you get up to Boca and you get up to Jupiter, that's like Those where are the real people are like cars, really yeah. rich. Like every other car is like a Bentley or like a Rolls truck. It's yeah. like, you're like, what the fuck is going on here? But yeah, dude, that noise. Like, so a big reason for my moving out of Miami was, it, I'm going to sound like a bitch, but I had an awful high, like such a bad weed high that I was like... Uh, what's the word? Psych- in a state of psychosis for mm. eight months. So it's like every, like it, it's like when you're walking down the street, you start to be hyper aware of all the noises in the background, yeah. and there's so fucking many that you're just like, oh my god! Wait, like, so it lasted like eight months. Oh, dude, it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. So I had to, I I had to dip. Yeah. I had to do Wait, it. that's what, bro? Dude, it was so, so fun. So, like, for it eight was... months, like, you were, like, permanently, like, a bit delayed. Yeah, yeah, like, in a, in, in a state that just, like, made living kind of unpleasant. Like, for eight straight months. Wow. And, like, I'm the mindset guy, you know? Like, you yeah. should be able to talk yourself out of that shit. But it was, like, it was beyond the mind, bro. It was, like, there was something actually going on there. And so it was, like, I just... And being, like, I didn't, I didn't know that many people there, like, at the time. Well, no, I knew a lot of people, but, like, I... I, when I was in that state, I didn't want to like go out, right? Yeah. Because I'm on the 19th floor, and getting out of my building is just a fucking hassle in itself. Yeah, everything's ahead. right. Like going down the elevator, I'm in the elevator with five people I don't want yep. to talk to, and then my car is parked on the 10th floor. I have to drive down 10. Floors. Mm-hmm. So everything was just a bitch. Yeah. And when I'm in that mindset, so like I was cooped up in my crib, in a little box in the sky. Yeah. So I was just like, this is just I'm like sure that drives you fucking crazy. Yeah, it drove yeah. me fucking nuts. So then my girlfriend okay. lived in Boca. So I would constantly drive up to Boca, and I'm like, "This is so peaceful." Um, yeah, right. So I just, I just, yeah, I had to send it out of there. But it's Boca is great for work, um, just because like that view is fucking awesome. Right? Is so I can yeah. work here, and it's pleasant. There's no honking. There's no reggaeton. I know. <laughs> no reggaeton. Constant. Bro. Oh my god. The reggaeton was one of the the driving factors, bro. I would <laughs> I would go to the beach at eight thirty in the morning, right? Eight thirty yeah. in the morning. And there would be a guy. With the fucking speaker? With like, the, yeah. And I'm like, dog, like, give me a break here. So, I mean, I think it really depends. For everyone watching, like, if you're thinking of moving to South Florida, it really just depends on who you are as an individual. Yeah. Right? Because, like, if if you're not, like, a party animal, and eh, but Miami creates party animals. But it's tough. It's really tough to yeah. say. Yeah. I think the way you did it, though, like, it just, it gives you a bit more perspective. Because mm-hmm. now you know that you don't want to be in Miami. Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, now you know that you don't want to be in Miami. Yeah. And, like, you can... I, con- some lessons you can only internalize if you learn them firsthand. Yeah. And I can go back and, like, I know the area perfectly. Yeah. And I have fond memories everywhere. So it's a, it, it gives me definitely a greater perspective over the situation because I don't, I don't... And, like, I have a girlfriend now, too, and it's like, you know, like, Miami is... Miami's not the place to have a girl. Not the place. <laughs> not the place at all. So it's like... The only reason I would go out to the club is, you know, like, your maiden call, right? Like, yeah. you're getting chicks. So it's like, now there's really no reason. Um, and this is just a great, great place to just... Have you noticed your, like, productivity levels increase since you've been oh, here? Oh, definitely, bro. Because there's no distractions, right? right? Like, the only distraction is, like, my dog and my girlfriend, right? So it's like, and I can just, like, I, when I need to focus, bro, it's, like, intense focus, right? Yeah. There's no honking. And with those Apple headphones, bro, like, you're in your own phone. Yeah, I heard those dent in your head. Do they actually? I'm kidding. Oh. I saw something on Twitter about that. Bro, I actually wonder if I have a demo. I played a lot of <laughs> Xbox when I was younger. Not that much, but... Yeah, dude. Boca... But Boca's getting so expensive. Like... But then again, can't even... Nothing's more expensive than Miami. Yeah. Right. So it's fine. It, it all comes down to the person's interests. Yeah. So it's... Yeah, I got a steal at my place. I was thinking about moving to this uh, building called Echo. Yeah. Um, I walked... So my boy Mason and I walked in there and... We we went up to the front desk and we were just like, yo, like we were just looking around, think, thinking about moving in here. And the guy was just a complete asshole. Like, it, first of all, it's super expensive. Like, a one bed is like five, six grand. Um, but I was like, right, like it's a sick building. Um, six but we walk in, guy's just an asshole. Bed. We like walked out. We're like, yeah, I'm not fucking living there. Like, no way. In Echo? But, yeah. Where's that at? Uh, it's like the end of Brickle. Like, on the left side or right side, you know? Um, 
I think Jacob Levin mattered. Levin yeah, mattered, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Because he's trying to be in your building, Jacob. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that building is locked down. Like, there's that that shit's crazy. They send your car down on an elevator. Okay, yeah, that's fucking it's, sick, right? Yeah, it's, but six grand for I can't, I can't justify six grand. I could. It's bit. funny. I can only justify it if like my other boys were were doing yeah, it. So like building. if yeah. if Mason and yeah. Sade and Luke, I would be like, fuck it. But six k for like I paid thirty six hundred for this two bed. This is that's sick. I right, didn't know that. and it's thirteen hundred square awesome. feet. And I have this little patio. Yeah, hot tub on the. Bro, to get magically like, to get thirteen hundred square feet in Miami, you're paying at least five grand. Like almost five grand. minimum five grand. Yeah. minimum. And I'm a five minute walk from the beach. Yeah. So that's that's that's, awesome. that's another thing of like why I'm like. And I like driving. You know, I don't like dude I, I driving to Miami. Oh my god, I hate it. It sucks. Like driving to my driving oh, in my oh fuck. Like dude, so I fun. love driving so around fun, here and in bro. Jupiter because you can actually go fast. Yeah, and like actually like I'm spending that much on a car and I can't drive fast. I you know. know. It's like I know like, that's the word. Like, dude, I want. I, I would get a new car like within probably a year if I wasn't in Miami. Yeah. But like at this point, I drive like yeah. a handful of times a week. The only place I really drive is the gym. Like, yeah, yeah. I was the same exact way. Ordered the beach, so I was like, dude, like, this, I, I had two cars in Miami too. Yeah, so like, you had the Jeep, right? I had the Jeep. Now I was just sitting over there collecting dust. Like, I don't even because it, it's a lease. I can't, I can't yeah. get out of it. It's so, <laughs> so you're fucked. just eating whatever. That yeah, is. I'm eating twelve hundred bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> eating it, bro. I can't do shit. Like, I, I tried selling it. I tried getting out of my lease early. You have to pay like fifteen grand to get out of your lease early. Damn. I'm like, bro, like, I'm, I don't, like, what do I do here? Um, but yeah, you can actually drive fast in Boca. That's got to be one of the biggest pros to it. Yeah. Not really. But Boca's really small. That's the thing. It's like, I grew up in a small, did you grow up, like, how far out of Cincinnati were you? Like, 30 minutes. So I was like in a suburb. Yeah. That's what I like about Boca, because I grew up in a suburb, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like a suburb body. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Miami's just like. Totally, yeah. But for everyone watching, like there are pros to everything. There's Agreed. cons to everything. There's it. It just all comes down to your wants and needs. Yeah, and I think like again, some things like even if Miami isn't right for you, you're like you would only get closure on that by going and experiencing it, and then being able to come to that conclusion on your own. Like exactly, us saying that isn't gonna kind of fill that mm-hmm. point. Yeah, um, but dude, I'm curious about your offers like with create your reality and how your, oh, yeah. how your programs work so like is it i know you have to create your reality and then do you have like a one-on-one yeah thing? so create reality is, is definitely the main the main thing um because that's just because my audience like my my audience is kids who like don't know what they want to do right yeah. it's all like co- kids who are like don't know if they want to go to college don't know if they want to go to high school um, and I've like grown up with all of them. It's kind of crazy because like they, they followed me when they were 15 years old and yeah. now they're graduating high school and they're all like, well, what do I do? You know, it's like Create Reality is perfect for that because it's, it, dude, it has like 70 modules in it or something. It basically touches on every single, seven, like every single pillar to your life that you kind of need to understand to start having a sense of like direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's basically, it, it, like, it's like a self-help course. Like we were talking about earlier, how it like starts by reprogramming your mind as corny as that sounds. Yeah. Like, yeah that's the first step exactly doing anything. so it, it's more of like a like a mental thing like getting your mind in the right place and things that schools should have taught you yeah type shit that's great reality that's a group and I, like, I do group coaching calls with that community as well so it's like a really cool community cool offer and then I have the one-on-ones where it's like high ticket and I like help people build their business scale their business scale their social media how do um, people find that one um Honestly, just like they go through the funnel, like they go through my my Discord, they go through Create Reality, and then like, or they just DM me and they're like, "Yo, do you mentor?" You know, I'm sure you yeah. get DMs like that too. It's like, I don't really promote that. Maybe once every like four or five months, I'll promote yeah. it. Just what I would do if I were you, start like segment the people that are in Create Reality mm-hmm. and just start sending them emails like about mm-hmm. your higher ticket offer, mm-hmm. and yeah, like you'll fill up your calendar. Bro. How many emails do you have on my list? I only have seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred, bro. My list is fucking obnoxious I'm sure it's 25 25,000 yeah and I uh, yeah it's maxed out I can't grow it anymore Kajabi get in your fucking software I know I know <laughs> I know and I'm getting 50% open on every email yeah it's so that's, fucked that's how my list is it's, they fucking love me it's I, love so, I love email list I love yeah. it but it's the best way to like build a relationship with your yeah, audience 100%. also like 
because you had like first of all just switch to like active campaign or uh, that's what I used originally but all my shit's on Kajabi so I'm like alright well I might as well just switch to the convert kit make some zaps see I used convert kit and I fuck I, I hated it dude convert kit's sick it's very simple Dude, you okay, or upgrade your Kajabi plan. You can't, like, yeah. max it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I fucking hit the limit. <laughs> like, do something. Yeah, yeah. Cause, like, even, I think that will be the, the biggest thing for you as you, like, continue to grow. Um, it's just, like, collecting... Because social media is always going to fluctuate. Like, obviously, you had this time of, like, but you hyper own, growth. You own an email, email list. You yeah. own. You can build a better relationship with them. Like, you can also have yeah. different offers for your email list. Like... Mm-hmm. You have create a reality, like you could have a thousand dollar offer that's like a bit more intense, and then mm-hmm. for those people that buy that, then you can sell more of your, your higher ticket. Dude, I was looking, thinking of making that inner circle like that higher ticket, like create a reality offer because yeah. the majority of the people that end up going into that are people that are just like create reality alumni and want to network. It's tough because, like, I do have a vast network of like rich dudes, multi millionaires, and shit, but they, they don't spend the time in a telegram, you know, right. like they don't. They don't make the time to do yeah, that. Yeah, but, like, the networking doesn't have to be with, like, those people. It mm-hmm. can be, like, with each other. Like, just mm-hmm. meeting more like-minded people, getting mm-hmm. more direct access to you. Yeah. Um, and, like, that, first of all, a lot of value is going to come through that. And then, second, like, you can, if you raise the price on that, like, you can host quarterly or even twice a year. You can host masterminds. Yeah, dude. Bahamas, Labor Day. You should go. I'm there. Bring the boys. That one's going to be dope. Like, that one's going to be pretty big. Bahamar. Yeah. Have you ever been to Bahamar? Huh. You gamble, right? You're a gambler. I'm a gambler, Dude, right. that casino is fucking insane. It's literally the like you walk into the hotel and it's just casino. Really? Like it's the biggest casino I've ever seen in my life. Like it is so much blackjack, so much roulette. <laughs> Dude, I turned two grand into eight grand in blackjack in one night there. Let's say I was like, yo, this is. Then you gotta turn eight grand into. No, no, then you lose the eight grand. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's what happened. I lost three grand of the eight grand, so I was like, all right, like the trip's paid for. Whatever, but yeah, those are my offers. Create reality one on one, and I have a software as well. But dude, software is hard. Yeah, software is hard. Like creating that user interface, and when you're not the one who knows how to do it, you have to talk to somebody else, and, and like you don't even know what you want. It's just yeah. like make that like look better. Yeah, like, <laughs> a little better. Like, just yeah, it's make so, that part cleaner. Whatever the fuck dude, that means. Yeah, it's that's a bitch because I don't want to like promote it when it's not like visually appealing and shit. So yeah. it's like it's tough. The like the concept behind the software is cool but like when you're not a coder it's yeah. really really difficult so I have that but um. yeah if I were you bro so I'd just like double down on like your community side of it and like even just your email list like the people that are paying attention to you and listening to you for free because mm-hmm. like first of all you have all this reach on TikTok yeah. you're filtering out the ones that actually resonate with you by getting them on the email list mm-hmm. I, I think you send like relatively regularly yeah three a week um, which is good but then, like, after they buy Create Your Reality, like, just having stuff to get someday to take something else yeah. and continue to build trust. Yeah. Because, like, there's always going to be people in that want it. Constant next level. Like, that's how yeah. a lot of the, that's how the webinar model works with a lot of our yeah. guys. Like, they're doing, let's say they sell a nine ninety seven offer on a webinar. Mm-hmm. Um, like, in some cases, if we're scaling that with ads, we're okay with breaking even on that. Usually, we, we're profitable, but um, we just know that at least like five to ten percent of the people that buy that are going to eventually take the yeah the higher so ticket offer yeah get them in the funnel that's my main objective now i have a free discord which is like well a free section to a paid discord so like that's oh, yeah. that's where like i'm trying to just collect people because then i'll just like send voice messages and hype up yeah. the paid version so that's my main objective right now so yeah there's, there's endless endless opportunities with but dude i think i'm shadow banned hard on tiktok right now that, it's because of all the conspiracy stuff, yeah. I'm sure. But yeah. I love posting that shit, though. Yeah, so I mean, like, and it's interesting. And, like, that's what you, that's what you want to yeah, talk about. It's, like, it's the, I think the only way to do that differently, if you wanted to, is, like, like go a little bit easier on the TikTok side. Yeah. But, like, just to make sure you don't get banned and then on your email list, you can say whatever the fuck you want to them. That's true. That's very true. I should probably do that. Because I'm one strike away from getting, like, some sort of, like, suspension. Perma banned? No, because I'm verified. They can't permanent ban verified accounts, thank God. Dude, it's crazy. I got verified on TikTok for 400 bucks, like, really? three years ago. No way. Yeah, and now no one can get verified on TikTok. Damn. It's insane. That's sick. Yeah, everyone's like, bro, how'd you get verified? I'm like, yeah, I just got it one day, but no, I got it for 400 bucks, which is crazy. Yeah, I just which got is it. Insane. I paid, you know, dude, that's what happens when you're like... One of my this. biggest losses in uh, this whole game was uh, before the blue check... Was eight dollars on Instagram, 
I paid twenty grand for it. Fuck. Twenty thousand dollars, bro. Fuck. Yeah. And I can't get that back. Like, uh, that, yeah, that's, yeah. That was, yours is like more real, right? Yeah. And it, if it, you it, click on it, it yeah, says, yeah. And for like a year, like I, I probably got its money's worth. Yeah. But like, and so did you go through like was it was like a PR kind of thing? Yeah. Where they like get no, you a bunch of press and maybe fake artist shit. Yeah. Fake art. But I also had, had two million followers on TikTok, so it's like they didn't have to like. Right. Go to but 20, 20 racks. Twenty bro. is crazy. But that was just sort of PR. For that me. was after I made like three hundred k in a day off my NFT. So like I was just pissing money. I yeah. was like I was like yeah I'm rich and then there goes all that money really quickly. Did you liquidate? Oh, I lost, so. bro. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, is um, that that like event, I didn't I didn't think about it when I saw the three hundred k sitting there. I was like, I got plenty. Yeah, yeah. I was like I'm good. So I was buying five thousand dollar tables. 20k on the check and then it was all in crypto as well so you gotta keep that in mind Fuck. and then uh woke up one day and crypto shit the bed like shit the bed yeah so then then the event came and that was like 150k for the event yeah and next thing i know i'm like well there goes <laughs> <laughs> i lived like a rock star for like three months well, that was fun that was it was really fun but now i'm like dude i'll probably It'll probably be a hot minute till I make 300k in a day. Yeah. Like that was <laughs> that was literally fucked. The NFT time is wild, bro. Like, I'm sure at some point NFTs will come back. Um, yeah. Yeah. That but was, yeah, like, you remember. Yeah, you got the internet, internet kids. Podcast. Yeah. Like, that was a lot of fun. I don't know if I've ever told you this. We've said it on a couple podcasts. But, like, on our first drop, I think I told you, we got scammed by our dev. Um, so, like, ours was a slow mint. So, the first one, we had, like, 200 supply on Soul, I don't. Even, I barely remember how any of this shit works. It's not like an idiot yeah. when I talk about crypto. Yeah, it's so but long ago. It was like 200 supply, and um, Solana was at roughly maybe 150 at the time, and we sold out in nine minutes. Wow. But we hired this dev through fucking Fiverr, who like actually was great. He was like, I think we paid him two grand. He did everything perfectly, <laughs> except. He had access to the wallet that the crypto was going oh. into. So I'm on the phone with Harry. And he's like, yo. Harrison Mount? No, Harry Swales, you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. um, like, he's my partner on that on the project. And he's like, yo, the fucking salon is disappearing from the wallet. I'm like, Yeah, he's probably in whatever fucking country he lives Holy in. Like shit. he's living. Like good for him, man. Holy shit! Yeah, dude, that was the craziest moment of my life when that NFT launched. Yeah. One second I was sitting, dude, isn't like the dopamine's crazy? In oh, like, yeah, it, it went from like zero dollars to like 150k in like five minutes. And I was like, this is this is this, has this to, is an infinite money. This has this to be is fake. weird. This is yeah. And then like, dude, that whole event was the most stressful thing I've ever had to do in my life. I remember that you were fucking hammered. Yeah. Did you come to that? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, the house. Yeah, that event, like, I had to have been hammered to get through that. I'm sure. Because, like, I had some dude who was supposed to bring, like, 30 chicks, and he just bailed last minute. <laughs> so I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh my god. He's like, the chicks don't want to come. I was like, oh. oh. I promised all these kids chicks. Hey, buddy. Fuck me. <laughs> so I got like, yo, this is a rug pull. There were no yeah, girls there. Yeah, so I just got fucking obliterated. That was, and then that boat, that yacht party also, that yacht yeah. party, the seminar, all of it was just so stressful. So I, I, I delivered on what I said I was going to do, and there's still people that are like, yo, what happened? You rug pulled? And I was like, bro, just forget just about shut it. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, like, like, bro, that was... You paid what for that? Okay, like, dude, yeah. fuck off. Kid. Yeah, literally fuck off. <laughs> all right, anything else you want to you want to touch on? Um, how do I how do I grow on TikTok? What, what else should I bro, do? I think you Last keep, thing. Keep hammering. Yeah. And like, literally just... The, the videos that come to you organic and be more personable bro like you, yeah. you have a, you have a, you're great at talking which a lot of people aren't like they can't do it like they're just like too forced with it but yours come off organically but if you told more like personal stories yeah really like vulnerable and shit like 
like maybe like one of your college relationships, one of your things that were yeah. going on or something, and like how that like molded you into a better person or something. Just personable as you, you can possibly get, right? Like mm-hmm. no filter. You do very well at it, but like once you remove that that yeah, last another layer, that yeah. last layer, it's it's GGs. Got it. That's it. And then post like once a day. Try not to do too much. Yeah, and it's interesting. I, I was talking, you know, Grant Lannon, CEO mm-hmm. of Sauce on Twitter. He's fucking yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Mind hacks yeah. on TikTok. Yeah, he's, he's I was talking to him, and he was like, "Yeah, bro, it's just shot more shots on goal, like more reps, like yeah, it's a muscle because it's funny. Like you'll have all of these. Let's say you post ten videos in a week, like. If I post 10 to 20 videos, I don't care if 19 of them flop in a yeah. sense where they only get a few Dude, thousand your videos views. get like, a consistent like 4,000 views though, which yeah. is really hard. Like that means you have a, like a, a base. Yeah. Right? And then you'll have an occasional video get like 300K and I'm like, this is very good. This is, that, that's, I mean, you can't ask for more than that. Totally. Especially starting out. Like, dude, your, some of your videos get more than mine like consistently. On my main account because I've been so shadow banned. Yeah, you're talking like, about the shit that they don't want you to talk about. Yeah, and then like I try to stop it, and then I just like I find something like the Bill Gates and the malaria shit. <laughs> and I'm like I have to talk about this. Like I can't not talk about it. So it's it's tough. But yeah, if you if you just stay in your lane, you're you're chilling. Just don't fuck with the community guidelines. Yeah, and then you're golden. All right, I won't, talk, I won't talk about fat. But you know what? Yeah. Dye my hair pink. Yes, there we go. There we go. And just advocate for Biden and put the them in my bio. Yeah, dude, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> that would honestly be a good experiment. Low key. Facts. No, but yeah, yeah. Just don't focus on community guidelines. Post daily. You're chill. All right, all right, Thank everybody. You. One last shout out to uh, today's video sponsor. Thank you, Zen, for sponsoring <laughs> this video. Thanks, guys. Lifetime Zins. All right, good shit. That was fine. Yeah.